Welcome to Sarah Gonzalez Unfiltered. Um, well, I'm going to shock you guys when I tell you that uh, former ESPN host, now turned independent podcaster Sage Steele, has just revealed that her March 2021 interview with President Biden was <gasps> heavily scripted. No kidding. Word for word by ESPN executives and that she apparently was not allowed to deviate whatsoever from that script. Watch. Here as we get set for a wonderful day I'm in happy sports. To be. Opening day for America's national pastime. This was about two months after he took office. Um, that was an interesting experience in its own right because it was so structured and I was told, you will say every word that we write out, you will not deviate from the script and go. To the word, like, Every single question shot. was scripted, gone over dozens of times by many executives, editors and executives. Absolutely. I was on script and was told not to deviate. It was very much, this is what you will ask. This is how you will say it. Um, no follow-ups. No follow-ups. Next. I knew that this was a lot bigger than just the wonderful editors that I worked with. This went up to the fourth floor, as we said, that we're all the, the bosses, the top executives, the decision makers are the president we're, of our company, the CEO, where, where they all work. Now, I think it's obvious to anyone paying attention why ESPN executives needed her to stick to the script when interviewing the dementia patient in chief, seeing as the network decided years ago to just carry water for the Democrats, no matter the cost. Doesn't matter if we hand the country over to a man who should be in a nursing home. Doesn't matter if he can't perform the job at all. Doesn't matter that he has no idea where he's at at any given point of the day. Participate in the narrative no matter what. But I've never met Joe Biden. I've never interacted with the guy. So I'm going to let Sage describe the experience herself, which she did on a Club Random podcast with Bill Maher last fall. And he goes, what, what, what is this for? <laughs> and I'm sitting there going... Because yeah. my mic's on, everybody's listening in the control room. Wow. And he's like, who am I talking to? Oh. Wait, what, what, what's her name? And I was like, oh. This is like a naked gun movie. <laughs> Just, I was going, oh my God. <laughs> um, and then he's like, he said, Sports Center, ESPN. And they told him, he goes, oh, uh, okay. And so I said, you know, what do you say? Hi, Mr. President. Right. Um, nice to meet you. And, um, and so I'm trying to just fill time. And he said, you know, I used to play football. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, yes, I, I, I know that. And now I'm, I think it was Delaware, University of Delaware, I believe. I didn't know um, that. Hence, yes. And so he started to tell football stories of his greatness. And I just was, again, I can't see him. You can see the curtain moving. Can, and that was the theme of the stories, that he was great at football? At football. He was the and hero he, in the story? And then he said, um, mm, wow. <laughs> he said, he goes, and I had the best hands <laughs> Ooh, the jokes they write themselves. I just, the amount of people participating in this ruse, the idea that Joe Biden is with it at all is just astronomical, if you think about it. Every single member of the mainstream media going up to the very top, clearly, every single White House staffer, Secret Service, worst of all, Jill Biden, his kids, his grandkids, not one of them care enough to get him out and stop him from constantly embarrassing himself. And you know, you just have to wonder why that is. Joining me now to discuss this and more, I have Matthew Marsden, Blaze TV contributor and actor and producer extraordinaire, along with Jason Buttrell, chief researcher of the Glenn Beck program, um, who is just drinking water. I don't know why he... Cheers. And, and I get no extraordinaire after mine. I, I need to work on those. Chief researcher of chief researcher extraordinaire of the Glenn Beck program. Jason <laughs> Buttrell in the house. Um, I mean, look, I am glad that Sage Steele is coming forward and saying, like, hey, they heavily scripted every single word and I was not allowed any follow ups. But it's like, 
oh my gosh, I'm shocked to hear that ESPN and CNN and all these all these networks are making these people follow a script for this person who clearly does not know where he is. Oh, I'm sh- is this my shocked face? <gasps> wow, I'm shocked. I mean, you have the president himself who's like, I'm told I'm not allowed to, I, I, I can't do follow-ups. I'm going to get in trouble, right? That's what he always says. I'm going to get in trouble if I don't stick to the script. So he's even saying it out loud. Yeah, well, I mean, firstly, she seems really annoyed, right? Like, have you noticed she's, the, I think, we probably might hear some more about that as time goes by because she's certainly frustrated. I mean, I mean, she's a legitimate journalist. She's going to be frustrated regardless. I mean, there there are some out there. Uh, but who is ESPN owned by? ABC. Mm, who? Disney. 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 Yeah. Mm, interesting. Mm-hmm. It's almost as if there are these conglomerates yeah. that mm-hmm. have a vested interest in the Democratic Party, mm-hmm. right? I mean, we keep saying this over and over and over again. That's why you got to subscribe to The Blaze, support conservative media. Ded- I'll go one further on that same line. Dedicated interest in propaganda, pretty much. Mm-hmm. Because if you're writing the script, you're not allowing the journalist to be a journalist and get information out. You're just spewing propaganda. Right. That means all the content that you see from ABC basically is designed in some propaganda way. Uh, Disney, that's obvious, you know, the kind of crap that they're doing right now. The amount of links that the the journalists now, journalists, air quotes, are going to cover up for this president is absolutely nuts. Can you imagine the Trump administration, oh, screw that, any GOP administration mm-hmm. that had this like list of parameters, like you will only say this, otherwise we're not doing it. How would the media react? Right. It would flip out. They might say our media is under attack, which is what they did yes. last time. Yes. For all, and all he did was say fake news. That, that was the reason for them to say they're under attack. Jason, he I can't recall which news outlet. It may have been CNN. He made the decision to remove one journalist from CNN, kept other journalists from C- – sorry, journalists there from CNN – Kept them in so that the news outlet was still represented in the room. He kicked one person out and all you heard from top to bottom coverage all day was how Donald Trump was assaulting free speech by not allowing that one person in, even though the network was still represented. That's what we heard. Yeah. All day. On all the cable news networks, the tickers, everything was was the assault on the First Amendment by Donald Trump. And now we're sitting here talking about state, I mean, this is all state-sponsored media at mm-hmm. this point. Oh, the yeah. only difference between like a Russia or a China or one of the, or North Korea or whatever is that they at least have the balls to say that it's state-sponsored. Yeah. The, the crazy thing is that in, in like a Russia or a China, the journalists are so scared for their own lives that they willingly participate in it. Well, they, they I won't say willingly, they participate in it. So they'll only ask questions that are friendly to the regime mm-hmm. or they'll straight up read information straight from the regime. Mm-hmm. And then they'll pretend to say that they're media, actual media and journalists. That's not the case here, right. which makes it even worse yeah. because they're not compelled to do this. They're just in league on their own a great point. Choice. Yeah, well, well, actually, actually, not particularly true, and I'll tell you why. Not that they're in in fright of losing their lives; they're scared of losing their jobs. Well, I that's know all true. about that, yeah. right? So, because if, of their bosses. Yeah, yeah. because yeah. because if they stray away from the narrative, you get cancelled, and then once you get cancelled, you can't get any more work. So then you're out. Then you you're you know working at Trader Joe's or whatever, and they know this. They they've seen it. Look. We've seen this over and over again. We saw it with January the 6th, where you go out and protest something. You're going to go to jail. It does, even if you're in the vicinity, they're going to lock you up. And we don't do anything about it. Right? This is what it gets down to at the end of the day. There's no pressure from our side to step up and say, hey, listen, this is unjust. This is wrong. Right? So what they do is they use that as a tactic. They'll go, okay, well, this is going to stop anyone speaking in the future. As far as entertainment's concerned, you come out and say something like you might want to vote for Trump. You get hammered by absolutely everybody. You lose your job. Look at Gina. Gina comes out and says something. Gina Carano, she's gone. Every other actor, every other performer looks at that and goes, I don't want to be frozen out. She, this woman says it comes from the top. We all know it, mm-hmm. right? So but I understand that people are afraid for their livelihood. So I, I'm not saying that I disagree with the fact that they're all on board because a lot of them are. 
But I think there's coming to it's coming to a point now where she was clearly pissed off and she was like, hang on a second, because there are some people out there that actually do care, right? That actually are like, hang on a second, you're interfering with my ability to be a journalist. So you you have me you have you have me, I guess, just curious in, on the Hollywood side at least. Yeah. Because right now it appears like everyone is marching to the same tune in the same direction, and that's radical left. How many how many people do you think, like in a percentage wise, are just normal people that just want to make movies and content? They don't care about all that radical crap, and they're scared to lose their jobs. Is it ten percent, twenty percent that are being silenced, or do you think it's larger? No, I think it's more than that. I think it's probably like five. Wow, that's percent. depressing. Wow. Certainly on the acting side of things, but. You're never going to know about it because they don't have an alternative. And this is something that we've been saying for a long time. Same as her. If she gets fired now, she's got nowhere to go, really. I mean, she could come to the blaze or she could go to one of the other, one of the competitors. Well, she can't. I mean, uh, to, to your point, just Sage Steele, um, I believe, settled a lawsuit with ESPN when she claimed that they violated her free speech rights. So she's already departed oh, well, from ESPN go. and is now independent. I think she's funded by Bill Maher, which is the only reason why it's like, OK, well, I don't know the, the arrangement between her and Bill Maher, but what I do know is when you're independent, no one can fire you. Well, I mean, and here's the thing. Let me ask you this. If ever that happened to any of us, would there be somebody coming in on their white horse to save us? And uh, no, conservatives are always left out to dry. Mm -hmm. And the left, I mean, and, and Bill Maher does my head in. I mean, every now and then you can see him. He's like, he's seeing the truth. He's like, whoa, no, I can't do that. But they back their own, and we don't. We don't do that. So there's no opportunity for more people to come out and say these kind of things. Like, so she came out, she's, she's had this lawsuit. I didn't know that, by the way, yeah. which makes sense. You can see now it makes right. sense. That's why she's talking. Right, she's yeah. coming out and talking about it. But in answer to your question, why would any actor come out? They wouldn't, because there's no other place for them to go to. So they shut up and they hunker down. And look... It's frustrating for me because the amounts of money that they're making are giant. But when I came out against the jibby jibby jab jab, right? Because I know I can't say it because of YouTube. I had people come and tell me all the time, oh, Matt, you know, actors, like, oh, you know, well, well done. Because the, yep. the thing about the medical freedom, that kind of like crossed a few like barriers, right, in that industry. Not one of them came out against it. Not one. Not one. They all went off and carried on making their money. And this is a problem. It's, we're not going to see any of these journalists come out unless we give them an opportunity to go somewhere else. I have to believe, though, that there are like I can't imagine um, a Jen Psaki or like, like I, I can't think of anyone on mainstream media right now who I don't think truly believes that they are like they are in it. They know what they're saying is false, but they're doing it for devious reasons. Like, I, I can't think of anyone who is on MSNBC, CNN, um, either of those networks, who I think, well, they might just be following along, right, because they're too scared. I genuinely just think they're, they are a lot of bad actors. I think yeah. so. Yeah. Like, I, I don't, what, when uh, Joy Reid is sitting there lying about, you know, collusion with Ra Rachel Maddow, collusion with Russia, and with Donald Trump and all of this. I'm like, I, I, I mean, she knows what she's doing. I don't think for one second she's only doing it because she's scared she's going to lose her job. Right. Um, but I mean, the people you named off, like specifically like MSNBC, I, I don't fault them as much. You can be a bad actor when you're not stating to be anything otherwise. You know what I mean? Like, like they, you know what they stand for. They don't, they oh, don't try they, to hide it. I think they do. I think if you try, if you ask, do you think that both MSNBC and CNN, you'd think that they don't pretend to be unbiased? CNN's supposed to. MSNBC does MSNBC, no. Yeah. MSNBC is unapologetically leftist. And that, that's the whole point of MSNBC. That's why they were created. So like- but they present, But they present their opinions as facts. Yeah, because I think they're just more righteous than the rest of us, which right. is typical liberal anyway. Right. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's the perfect liberal network. You know, right. you're, you're righteous about it and you're trying to destabilize the country because you hate it. Right. You know, it's, right. Like, it's a perfect network for yeah. you. Well, I, I, I think it's more, I won't say, e well, yeah, it's more evilish, if that's even a word. I like that word. You know, like, I like it. TM. <laughs> <trademarked> Evil ish. <laughs> <laughs> um, for, for a network like CNN, which. CNN used to be, I mean, that's what everyone watched back in the day because mm -hmm. it was always just straight up news. That's what you right. watch. 
Um, I think a lot of people considered the BBC to be the same. Yeah. It's just, it was just regular. Now, I don't, does anybody even in the UK? Oh, no, no, no. It's, it's far left no, now, it's, right? it's, all, it's all far left. I Under mean, the guise of being left. just regular news. Yeah, but nobody really believes in it anymore. And I think that... Because it's state-sponsored. Yeah, Trump, Trump, like, exposed a lot of that. But some people just don't care. Yeah, I, I don't think there's, I, I think that there is either right or left. I don't think there's any kind of mainstream news platform. And if there is, it's going to come from the right because the right is going to want to show opposite opinions because we believe that we have better ideas than them. And so competing in the marketplace of ideas is what you want to do. Mm -hmm. You want to show that you want to expose them. They, they can't have their narrative challenged at all. They don't want that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's go ahead and take a quick break. We will be back with more. First, we want to thank our sponsor, this segment, Raycon. So I, as I told you guys, I am about to go. Um, I'm about to take a lot of flights in a very short amount of time uh, doing a documentary for Blaze Originals. I'm very excited to share it with you guys. Uh, I'll just say this. It's about uh, some rigged. Wait, you say rigged election. It's rigged. <laughs> It's very rigged. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. And so I am going to be taking my Raycons. I cannot travel without them. Raycons offer amazing quality audio at half the price of other premium audio brands. And um, they've got tens of thousands. If you don't believe me, take, take the word of the tens of thousands of five-star reviews that they have. They've got these optimized gel tips, and they come in several different sizes. So you make sure that you use the ones that fit the most comfortably in your ears to actually stay there. I wear them when I'm on a flight. I wear them when I am working out, when I'm doing burpees, which are from the devil, by the way, and they still don't fall out of my ear. They've got a 32-hour battery life, eight hours of playtime, and uh, I highly, highly recommend them. They're like those other brands, but like way a fraction of the cost, okay? So you're going to get the same quality, but you're going to pay less. And in Joe Biden's America, I would say that's a pretty great deal. You can go to B. B-U-Y, Raycon.com, buyraycon.com. You will get 20% off your Raycon order plus free shipping if you go to buyraycon.com slash Sarah Unfiltered. So yesterday, uh, President Trump made a rally stop in Wisconsin where he rightfully criticized Joe Biden's declaration of Transgender Day of Visibility on Easter Sunday this year. Here is what Trump had to say. And what the hell was Biden thinking when he declared Easter Sunday to be Trans Visibility Day? Such total disrespect to Christians and November 5th is going to be uh, called something else. You know, it's going to be called Christian Visibility Day when Christians turn out in numbers that nobody has ever seen before. <laughs> Dear God, please let him be right. <laughs> we can't handle another four years of this. Please, please. So I want to get your thoughts on this, guys, but I want to throw in here. Uh, new polling from the Wall Street Journal shows that Joe Biden is trailing uh, Donald Trump in six out of seven battleground states. These are Arizona, Georgia, Michigan, North Carolina, Nevada and Pennsylvania. They are tied in Wisconsin, although uh, Biden leads Trump in Wisconsin when third party candidates are factored in. And when voters were asked to choose a candidate uh, that had better physical and mental fitness to handle the White House, just 28% said Biden. That's how it's written. But for me, I'm like, what do you mean? It, it says just 28% said Biden. I'm like, how the hell did Joe Biden have 28% of people who said that he was physically and mentally fit for office? What are these people smoking because I want some? <laughs> They're all dead. So in comparison to them, he's mentally fit and able. It's the dead voters that it's are saying the dead that? Voters it that must be. It. Yeah. Uh, 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 20, that's almost 30, almost 30% 30 of voters. This is Pennsylvania, though, you said, right? Did you say Pennsylvania? No, it's Wisconsin. a national poll. Oh, that's Wisconsin. Yeah. Wisconsin. Come uh, which, yeah, Wisconsin. Come on. Come on. Yeah, I just. It don't matter. Uh, that's what's so crazy about this political landscape is it does not matter. People are so siloed off and they're, they have their minds made up. It does, really does not matter what either candidate does at this point. Uh, they're just going to vote for their side. And Donald Trump, I I like him, but I mean, 
He is the only candidate that I can remember in my lifetime that could get an insane amount of votes for him with a very, very strong and rabid base, but the exact same thing on the other side. It's crazy. I, I just, I don't even know if that's ever happened before. It's almost like it didn't happen. Oh, okay. I can't say that, can I? You mean the fortification? Mm, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, I mean, there are a good chunk of people who just are broken. Like, he's just broken them. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, case in point, probably the 28% who said that Joe Biden was more physically and mentally fit for office than Donald Trump. Cl just, clearly, people are broken here. Yeah, but people, I, you know, I don't know if it's because we don't have the fair press, because everyone keeps saying over and over again that he's the greatest president, he's fantastic, he's this. And I'm looking, I'm like, what is going, like, like you said, what are you looking at? I mean, the guy can't string a sentence together. Um, by the way, I want to go back to what you said at the very beginning. I am Catholic. Joe Biden should be excommunicated from the Catholic mm -hmm. Church. Simple. I don't want anyone telling me, hey, listen, no, he's a Catholic. What do you know? Blah, blah, blah. No, he shouldn't. He should be excommunicated. And if, if the Catholic Church had a bunch of bishops that actually did something and stood up for something like all the Protestant pastors did through when the lockdown was on, he would be gone, mm -hmm. right? And by the way, you don't even have to, just don't say anything, right? Because everyone's like, well, now technically, uh, it, Trans Visibility Day is on the third. Firstly, I'm sick to death of Trans Visibility Day, Pride Month. And did you see the latest thing is, <laughs> is gay prol? Yeah. What? Yeah. Gay prol. Just that's, wait one month that's and have gay. You don't have to change one letter. Yeah, that will not. <laughs> like, come on. But, but Pride, come on but Pride, now. But Pride Month is point. in June. It's all the time now, isn't it? Can we, does it matter? Why, why is it? Why is no, it? It, it's, it's just 24-7. Yeah. But why does everyone have to have a day of this and a day of that? I'm, so, is, I'm sick of it. When is white heterosexual Christian man day? Yeah. Let me look. Oh. I don't see it on the calendar. Mm -hmm. Check the answer. It's got to be there. Uh, still no. Oh, wow. Not there. That's very surprising. Yeah. Yeah. Why stop there? I'd I'd love to see a uh, I'd love to see a president just to troll the ridiculousness of whatever month this is or whatever day this is, whatever like intersectional like they they do this to answer your question to further sectionalize us off into however they want to categorize us and then set us against each other. That's the entire point. I mean, have you have you did you have you guys heard uh, Morgan Freeman on Black History? Uh, amazing, absolutely amazing, amazing. Yeah. amazing. Uh, just hearing that much common sense from some, and especially the guy that was interviewing him, and he's just flabbergasted. Mm -hmm. He does not understand because he, he, they've never had that kind of pushback before. Yeah. It's awesome, but that's kind of like the cool thing about Trump too is he'll like just say up straight, say up, uh, say things you're not supposed to say. Absolutely right. true, but he'll say it and he'll freak people out. And people like that 28% in Wisconsin, mm -hmm. they, it just it breaks them. They yeah. do not know how to process the information. But those broken people are, I don't know. The, the, they're also very emotional because yes. the amount of times you see people say you're a something phobe. Like you're a transphobe. Is that, you know, phobia means that you're terrified of them, that you have an irrational fear of them. Mm -hmm. I have an irrational fear of, <laughs> of trans people. A man in a dress? Yeah, like, like no, it's not. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't. It's not like arachnophobia, like I don't like spiders. Right. But, but all, everything is about heightened emotions, feels. There's no logical, critical thinking anymore on any of this. I mean, you've seen this with J.K. Rowling, right? Like how they're going after her. Mm -hmm. That, to me, is like, oh, hang on a minute. The, the, the whole basis of this movement is emotional. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we have to fight back. You, you actually have to fight back. But just by stating facts and not moving from them. But the problem, but I, but I think that you have to add something to the facts. Because the problem is that you are dealing with people who are only moved by emotion. So you have to figure out how to state a fact and also appeal to their emotion somehow in the opposite direction to get them to latch on to it. Because if they were critical thinkers, if they were analytical about their decisions, they would not be... A crazy leftist in the first place. You would think that <laughs> those policies that they attract that they got attracted them in the first place through emotion. You think they get pretty damn emotional when they lose their jobs, right? When inflation is so high they can't buy groceries, um, it, when their streets are torn apart by violent crime. That seems pretty emotional to me. Yeah. That's why I just don't see any staying power yeah. in what they're doing. They, they've definitely mastered that over a generation or so. But how long does that last before everything collapses and you're like, huh? Right. Maybe but they blame it. This is the pro what they do is they blame it. 
right? So there's no personal ownership. It's always like, okay, I've lost my job. It's Trump's fault, right? You're not going to cure that ever. And, and by the way, I said this about DeSantis. It doesn't matter whether it was DeSantis or Trump. They would do the same. Oh, 100%. They would absolutely say, it's his fault. He's a right-wing maniac. You know, he did X, Y, Z. We are never going to appeal to them. That, that's just the reality of it. You're not. You, you're, not you're not, Sarah. It's not going to change. The blaming Trump thing is absolutely cracks me up, from, for, especially like Biden, the whole administration, yeah. but Biden. To this day, I would think that there would be a shelf life on blaming your, right. your predecessor, but there's not. No. You know, we're, we're already to the next election, and they're, and they're actually blaming the border, the border. crisis on Trump. Yep. Like, are you kidding me? <laughs> How? In what world can you blame him for and then, it? And then if you're logical and you say, well, hang on a second, it's, it's his fault. If it's his, it's Trump's fault, that means that Biden has done nothing. Right. Rectify it. Right. <laughs> the no, time it was just so bad that he had all the things he's done to rectify it haven't even put a dent in there. That's how bad Donald oh. Trump was on the border. The timeline on that, on the blame game on the border is hilarious. The first thing he did within the first week was yep. sign all those executive orders to knock out Undoing. everything. Then mm -hmm. they get crazy amounts of, uh, of, 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 of migration. The border is, on, is a complete dumpster fire. And what do they do? They blame it. They say it's seasonal. Ah, oh, yeah, it's just seasonal. No big deal. So first it's seasonal. Now they can't say that anymore because right. apparently it's all season long during the Biden administration. It's seasonal like the, the whole year. Yeah, like all the time. No, 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 and, no, no. But now no. it's Trump's fault. No, it's only, no. Jason, <laughs> stop. It only happens in the winter, the summer, the spring. And the fall. Oh, that's and a good apart point. from that, it never happens. <laughs> that, that's, that's, that is seasonal. That's true. You've convinced me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, we've got to uh, we got to take another quick break. We'll be back with more, but we want to thank our sponsor, Preborn. So, Preborn is an amazing organization that I am so proud to partner with because. The Ministry of Preborn empowers young expectant mothers in crisis to choose life. The way that they do this is very simple. It's through ultrasound because when a, a young woman, they're, they're, she's usually scared, right, because she's been lied to by the left. She's been told it's just a clump of cells. Don't worry about it. By the way, you won't have any regrets. You're going to be super happy when you uh, kill your baby in your womb. Well, we know that that's a lie. And so when these women, these scared women, go in and they go into a, a preborn crisis pregnancy center, she actually gets to learn the truth, which is that is a baby. It's not just a clump of cells. And if your parents, you know, the first time you hear the heartbeat and the first time you see the ultrasound on the screen, it is a life changing moment. And that makes the woman all the more likely to choose life for her baby. So the cost of an ultrasound is $28. How many babies' lives can you help us save? You can go to preborn.com slash Sarah. Donate securely over at preborn.com slash Sarah. Okay, last reminder. I'm going to give you guys, and I know there's still going to be people who are going to be in the comments like, where did you go? This is my last show this week. You, I, we looked for someone else named Sarah Gonzalez who could come in and fill in, and we couldn't find any Sarah Gonzalez's who wanted to do it. So this is my <laughs> last show uh, of the week. I will be back next Thursday, okay? And I will be doing next Thursday as a treat to you guys, a very, very explosive special that you're not going to want to miss. This guy's involved. Just saying. Um, and, uh, we've got a lot in store for you. So, um, we will, uh, we're, I'm very excited about it. And that's all that I'll say about that. Okay. Uh, so yesterday, transportation secretary Pete Buttigieg, who is, uh, freshly back from his maternity leave, I guess, went on Fox news and mocked Americans for their hesitancy to buy electric vehicles. Watch Tesla sales fell 8.5% the first quarter of this year. Ford this week is laying off two thirds of its workforce at the F-150 electric lightning plant. It's also scaling back a battery production facility because of sagging sales. EV sales are nowhere near what this president wanted or expected, yet the administration continues to shove them down consumers' throats. Why? Well, let's be clear. Consumers have wanted and purchased more EVs every single year than the year before. And, uh, you know, Tesla is facing more competition as GM and Ford and Stellantis and other competitive players uh, start to make sure they get a piece of the EV market. 
Let's be clear that uh, mm. the automotive sector is moving toward EVs, and we can't times. pretend otherwise. Thank Sometimes in these debates, happen. Right. I feel like it's the early. Like, wait, 2000s were you not being clear before? Some people who uh, think that we can just have landline phones forever. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, that's what it. Those oldies who just can't give up their landline phones because they can't figure out how to use that cell phone. That's what this is. Or oh, I couldn't possibly be because you know maybe electric cars are. Not superior. Couldn't be that. Our land, did they ever ban landline phones? Was there ever exactly. a government that said after 2035 you cannot have a landline phone? Isn't it so interesting that it seems to me that all of the things that, like, if it was so great, you wouldn't have to ban the competition. Same with Obamacare and all of this. It's like, but if it was so great, you wouldn't have to mandate it. Yeah. People would just do the thing because it was awesome. Right. There, there would be no need for mandates. The only reason that Ford and all these other companies are like pushing out some of these cars that are clearly not even ready for the market mm -hmm. is because they're being mandated in right. places like California that they cannot have gas powered cars anymore. Right. And, that, and that bill is and th that law is spreading to other states. That, that is the only reason they are forcing a technology. Look, I think that electric cars are cool. Right. I mean, I've driven a Tesla. I've driven several. I, I will. Probably won't ever be able to afford one, but uh, they're which fun. is another which is another issue. That's a big okay. issue. That's a very big issue. You're, like, most people now don't even buy brand new cars because they're too expensive. They'll right. try and find you know a ten year old car or whatever. But that's not going to be doable. Right. Once this happens, past twenty thirty five, you're not going to be able to do that. Plus, you're not going to be able to even work on your own vehicles to save money, which is something I've had to do in this economy. Well, I want to read uh, an AP headline here. U.S. first quarter auto sales grew nearly 5% despite high interest rates, but EV growth slows further. So sales of electric vehicles grew only 2.7% to just over 268,000 during the quarter, which was, you know, just a little bit below the 47% growth that uh, fueled record sales and 7.6 market share last year. So, so I, you know... I just may, maybe because Jason, you're right. There are certain models of Teslas, um, the Cybertruck or whatever. Like that's it's super cool. It looks really cool, but nobody can afford those models. So when you go to the ones that people can afford, there are many issues with them. Plus, maybe people who drive long distances don't want to be having to map out where the freaking charging stations are, right. so that they can make sure that they charge their. Car. I mean, there, there are serious are issues. You can't do road trips. Yeah. So, and, and then what are you going to do? Take a plane? Those are crashing all over the place. Get, I'm probably not going to be here next week. I get, <laughs> can we change that to like the... I might, I might be flying United. You may never see me again. <laughs> but so, I, okay, I want, to, um, I want to play one more for you as, as we're talking about the mandate. Go ahead. Give me one more yeah. comment. Yeah. I, I, there's never been a technology when they said, You're, you have to use this. Right. Like when, 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 let's stick with phones. When cell phones came out, they didn't say, this is all you exactly. can use. Right. And we don't care if it's not ready yet. This right. is the only thing you can use. This technology, look, I, I agree that th that's probably the future. It's going to go into something like that. If not, then something similar off of gasoline. But it's not ready. Right. So why push something well, on us that's not ready? It's not just even the technology that's not ready. It's the equivalent of saying, okay, by, by next year, everyone's got to move from landlines to cell phones. And by the way, we've got five cell phones phone towers right. across America. Right. How's the grid going to handle it's, that? It can't. Right. Exactly. They can't handle they can, it in California. Can. It yeah. can't do it. Right. Exactly. So, you know, we're talking about while this is going on, the regime is pushing for this mandate to be mandated everywhere. Electric, electric vehicles for all. Um, I'm totally sure that the decision being made today on the strategic oil reserves is just a total coincidence. Listen to what the Biden administration said. Today, the Biden administration announced that it's going to pull back its plans to refill the SPR, the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. You know, they drained that to try and bring gas prices down earlier. Well, they've been trying to fill it back up, but now it is way too expensive. So they say we hit $86 Why? today Why? on the futures market. They say it costs too much, so we're not going to do it. And now is the time is of oil, so huge political, mm, uh, geopolitical it. risk out there. Well, that's so a conundrum. I don't, I don't know. This summer could be a tough summer if you want to drive somewhere. <laughs> or heat your house. Or do anything. <laughs> or eat food. Because no trucks ever right. operate on gasoline, do they? It's almost like this was all part of a master plan. Hmm. 
Mm. How the hell does Pete Buttigieg, how does he have the cojones to go on network TV and actually talk about that? How does he have a job? I mean, think about how do any of them have a job? How do any of them have a job in the Biden regime? How how does Biden have a job in the Biden regime? (laughs) Right, that's what I'm saying. Well, he's the only one that's not a DEI hire. You know, in in any sane administration, they would have fired Buttigieg a long time ago just because of the appearance. It might not have been his fault, but because of the appearance of Of everything. Of the chest feeding? (laughs) Yes, right. (laughs) Exactly my point, Sarah. Well, not really, but... No, I mean, how, think about how many things he's been he's presided over, like yeah. the the supply chain crisis, right at the very beginning. Uh, presided over is very loosely used here because he didn't do anything. He was on paternity leave at the yes. time, and he stayed on it. Yeah, he didn't have the ball. I'm gonna say balls instead of cojones. He didn't have the balls to come back and, and just to check in and say, "Hey, it's he all might good. not have balls at all, Jason." I'm that's not a, sure. That's another. I excellent have nine point. children. I've never been on paternity leave. This is bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> well. You didn't chest feed your child, so you weren't. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. I did, I did, like, I did, I did. boy, oh, you only thought I didn't yeah. chest feed my child. Mm-hmm. Um, so I want to play, speaking of diversity hires within the Biden regime, I want to play uh, KJP, White House Press Secretary, the esteemed White House Press Secretary, always poignant, Karine Jean-Pierre, on this latest decision watch. You guys started draining the Strategic Petroleum Reserve to try and help with the Putin price hike a few years ago. Said you were going to refill it, but now it doesn't seem like that's happening. Why? Well, from I, I believe the Department of Energy is uh, is responsible for for that uh, but particular uh, component. That's your administration. Well, that, so I would refer you to the Department Trump! of Energy. Trump. I know there were certain components to that, uh, and how they were going to move forward in refilling, uh, refilling it. <laughs> I, they would have, to have more specifics just, on that for you. Okay. Ridiculous. Is the Department of Energy Who? like? Is it have an office in independent, Beijing? Independent, right? Is yeah, it independent? I mean, Who runs the department? Department of Energy, ma'am. It's you. I've just realized the problem. These boneheads don't understand that they they're actually in charge of those departments. They're like, well, you got to check in with them. We don't know anything about that. We, but you run. The, we do. Oh, it's like the shit. Spider-Man. It's a Spider Man. Yeah, the <laughs> you know, it's you know. just such a clown imagine. Show. There's a border crisis. Why well, you need to speak to the Homeland Security? Homeland Security is like, but you're the guys that are our bosses. Yeah, but you're the Department of Homeland Security, so you should. Sh- yeah, but you guys tell us what. Th- no, but you. It's so stupid. Oh. I mean, but with the amount of civics knowledge in the country right now, there's probably a lot of people watching it and going, she's made an excellent point. Like, what can they do? It's not not like they're their bosses or anything. (laughs) Cool. What's Joe Biden supposed to do? (laughs) He has nothing to do with the Department of Energy. It's kind of true, though, really, isn't it? I mean, the truth is, is he has nothing to do with any of it. I mean, I don't know who's like pulling, who's the puppet master behind that's working it, but he, he doesn't know what he's doing, does he? That is fair. That is fair. But the people who, I mean, there's obviously someone who does, or a, a cabal of people who may or may not have fortified the last election. I, but don't take my word for it. Go read it in Time Magazine. I didn't say that. I, when I say it, it's conspiracy theory, okay? But Time, it's just that Time Magazine said it, so, you know. Um, all right, we've got to uh, take a quick break. We will be back with more. Oh my gosh. I am so excited for what I'm about to show you guys in the next segment. You're going to hate me. But I'm going to love it. <laughs> First, we want to uh, remind you guys about the uh, Fearless Army Roll Call 2.0. For those of you who are not familiar with this, uh, this is the Fearless Army annual roll call event, all day men's summit in Nashville, Tennessee, that invites believers to fellowship together across our superficial differences and adopt the mindset and strategies that will allow us to conquer the demonic forces tearing apart this country. Boy, ain't that the truth. Uh, Jason Whitlock has partnered with country music star John Rich for Roll Call 2.0. Yes, it's presented by Preborn. June 1st in Nashville, they're going to have lots of great stuff for you. And uh, they've got messages delivered by Jason, Glenn Beck, North Carolina Lieutenant Governor Mark Robinson, uh, and many, many more. And I'm just saying, I want to go. I might identify as a man so that I can go. (laughs) You can go to fearlessarmyrollcall.com to reserve your spot. That is fearlessarmyrollcall.com. Well, you may have heard the news, big news, emotional news, that Lizzo, the singer Lizzo, made a post on Instagram on March 30th saying, I'm getting tired 
putting up with getting dragged by everyone in my life and on the internet. All I want is to make music and make people happy and help the world be a little better than how I found it. But I'm starting to feel like the world doesn't want me in it. I'm constantly up against life. Is it the millions of dollars that she's made that make her feel like the world doesn't want her in it? I'm constantly up against lies being told about me for clout and views, being the... Being the butt of every... (laughs) Being the... (laughs) Okay. Being the butt of the joke every single time because of how I look. My character being picked apart by people who don't know me and disrespecting my name. I didn't sign up for this shit. (laughs) I quit. Well, were you guys... I don't know how emotional you guys were about that, but I would like to inform you... Um, as I'm sure anyone with a working brain suspected, she of course was not going to quit music. It may have been just a, you know, seeking of attention. And, uh, she just put out a video that was like, oh, actually, actually I changed my mind. I'm not, I'm not quitting music. That would be crazy. Watch. I want to make this video. Oh my goodness me. My eyes. When I say I quit, I mean, I quit giving any negative energy attention what i'm not gonna quit is the joy of my life which is making music which is connecting the people because i know i'm not alone in no way shape or form am i the only person who is experiencing that negative voice that seems to be louder than the positive if i can just give one person the inspiration or motivation what? why to why is she doing this in this outfit letting negative people win negative comments like win, how can you just stand there and speak then normally even more while wearing that that i could have hoped for with that being said i'm going to keep moving forward oh I'm gonna keep being me. big shocker once again i just want to say she thank you forward? the love that i've received got no choice <laughs> Means more than <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Those boobies be hanging on for your life. <laughs> She's really testing the elasticity of skin. Oh my good gracious. Wow. It's almost like she's putting herself out there in a position to be mocked by wearing stuff like that. No. She is putting herself out there. Almost like mm. that's the entire stick is what you're implying. Uh-huh. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, no, I could not be. It. No. Not it you don't think? Oh, well, that's exactly what it is. I'm just, I want to know who was dragging her anywhere, because I think that would take a lot of effort. <laughs> 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 I mean, we could do these all day. I mean, <laughs> But she plays the flute. She's a good person. And she's totally not moving to Canada if Trump gets elected either. Did, Did she say, say that? that? No, but I'm just. Oh, man. I wish that she would. I'd be surprised. I just. It's That's like, what they do, though. They make these statements and they've just not got the courage of their conviction. They go, oh, right. you know what? Actually, I'm making millions of dollars out of this, so I'm not going to quit. Yeah, except she did it all along for attention. Everyone knew she wasn't going to quit. She clearly is. I mean, like all of the mocking in the world will not prevent her from wearing a two piece on stage and shaking those whatever those were all over the place. <laughs> I didn't need to see it again. I don't need to see it again, guys. <laughs> and I just it's like it's very sad to me that these are that Gen Z is screwed. The, like this is this is one of their role models. These people are their role models. How did this become a thing? Which thing? Like, like, I mean, why did Lizzo become a thing to begin with? Like, why did, is she like one of their champions now of, I don't know, like some kind of group that's... Body positivity? That's what it is? Which I I don't, I don't know. That was a question mark at the end of that. I don't know, which by the way, is also going to encourage women to eat themselves to death. Mm-hmm. I don't know about role model, but she's a <laughs> model that rolls. Oh, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> How could it be done for fat shame? And I don't care. I mean, I, so when you said this was such Should fat shame. When you said it was big news, I didn't know how ginormous the news was. <laughs> but Stop. there we are. By the way, I Matt's would like crying to- over here. 
<laughs> oh, I the eclipse like... is coming. <laughs> okay, that's what it is. No, it was just Lizzo. It was just Lizzo. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> I want to see how much hate mail I get for this. To be fair, I don't fat shame people who are like not flaunting their fatness in my face. I appreciate someone as a former fatty. I appreciate someone who is like, I know I'm overweight and I'm trying to work on it, right? What I don't appreciate is someone who is like, look at me, look at all the roles. You should be proud to look like this. No, you're going to eat yourself into an early death. And I don't think- In my belly. Oh, yeah, look at that. Oh, yeah. Oh, I want my baby back. Baby back. Oh, look at that. We rehearsed this. We did. did. Believe it or not. This did come up off air for a completely different it did. reason. <laughs> totally different. Totally different reason. And so ah, I, I just, like, I'm so sick of this body positivity. Like, I, yeah, I want to show all of my fatness to everyone because I'm proud of it. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, it, it, I just saw a video the other day. I mean, and the caption was, they've ruined cheerleading. And it was a all, all large squad. And what is the purpose of doing that? Right. And then there's like, you have like Victoria's Secret who are doing like these, you know, their model having like a huge line, whatever, however you want to describe it. I mean, they're clearly trying mm-hmm. to say this is healthy. Right. This is something to aspire to. Right. And I, and my, I can't fathom why, unless they're just trying again to create some other kind of group that they can say, hey, they're being oppressed. Probably. No, well, you, we, you, have, you have unhealthy people are easier to control. It's just a fact, you know. If you if you have someone people that is not, unhealthy, sick, yeah, yeah, yeah keep yeah. them unhealthy, keep them sick. On big then pharma, they're, then they're de- then they're dependent mm-hmm. on government for this or that. Yeah, I totally agree. All right, we've got to, we got to take. A, I was, we're just joking, okay? We got to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Time now for a welfare check. First, thank you. You're a beautiful woman with a bright, intelligent show. Second, Latita James, uh, Kamala Harris, and Fannie Wilson all attended the same college. I wonder if they were sorority sisters. I did not know that they... That's true. I, let's check, because that is very... I would say, I think it's Howard that is the university and i would say um this particular if that's true and all three of them went to that school and came out as dumb as they are i think that that university should just be completely disbanded and how many like how many people from college like that like that that if you're that close do you still keep in touch with do you still perhaps even strategize with you know right well I mean, Fanny Willis didn't go to any White House meetings. Oh, wait, just kidding. She did. They're on the books. So I'm sure, Jason, that nefarious stuff that you're talking about never happened. You know what's, sure it's all a coincidence. You know what's crazy? So we'll get submissions all the time, and I'll read them, and I'll be like, no way. There's no possible way that missed everybody. Uh, some journalist would have reported on this. And a lot up. of the times, like, holy crap, yeah. that is completely true. Yeah, yeah. Journalists are not doing their jobs. Wild. Oh, I'm doing my job. <laughs> but, you know, it's like everybody else out there. You're fired. <laughs> Wait, Matt, do it. <laughs> you fired. Yes! Oh. <laughs> all right, we'll see y'all next Thursday.